Good afternoon and welcome back to the SaferSim webinar, webinar series with our first presentation of 2021. My name is Jacob Hyden and I'm a program coordinator for SaferSim at the University of Iowa. SaferSim is a tier one university transportation center with a research priority of promoting safety and our webinar series features the research projects from within our center. So thanks for joining us today. There will be time at the end of the presentation for questions and discussion. Attendees can use their microphone or, or chat box uh, to participate. So I'm sure we're all familiar with Zoom, um, but feel free to use the chat box at any time throughout the presentation as well. And we'll address those questions or comments at the end. Um, today's webinar features a research project from the University of Puerto Rico, Mayaguez, examining safety in school zones. Um, so I'll turn it over to the presenter and I'm pleased to welcome Didier Valdez. Thank you very much, Jacob. Thank you. Um, welcome to our webinar. Uh, first of all, I hope that everyone is safe and in good health. We will be presenting today uh, the results of our Safer Scene project entitled Assessing a Two Step Posted Speed Reduction as a Potential Countermeasure to Improve Safety in School Zones Using Driving Simulation. At UPRM, we work collaboratively in our projects. Our research team includes professors Didier Valdez Diaz, Alberto Figueroa Medina, Benjamin Colucci Rios, the graduate research assistants that participated in this project, Jindira Taveras, Maria Rojas, and Lorena Sierra, and an undergraduate research assistant, Rocio Sotomayor Irizarri. Um, I am Didier Valdez Diaz, uh, the PI of this project, and I will be presenting this webinar today on behalf of our research group and the co PIs, Professors Benjamin Colucci Rios and Alberto Figueroa Medina. Um, the agenda for this webinar um, starts with an introduction to a research problem, problem and objectives. Then uh, the main tasks developed in this project, including our driving simulation experiments and analysis that will lead us to our main conclusions and recommendations. Well, according to our traffic safety data, uh, traffic crashes in school zones are a serious safety concern that are related to school zone fatalities in the United States and Puerto Rico averaged 124 deaths per year in school transportation related crashes between 2008 and 2017. Research has shown that drivers do not comply with posted speed limits. Therefore, studying the behavior of road users in school zones is critical. Previous research has identified that the contributing risk factors in school zone crashes include speed and behavior, distractions, unsafe street crossings, and unsafe areas to drop off or pick up passengers. Now, our project's initial primary objective was to use our driving simulator to study the effecting effectiveness of the two-step reduction strategy. That's the reason for the title. Um, that was the best countermeasure in a previous micro simulation safer sim study conducted at the University of Central Florida. But we decided to include other posted speed limit strategies, uh, I'm gonna call it PSL strategies in our assessment. The PSL strategies evaluated included the existing PSL arrangement, the TSR that consists of an additional posted speed limitation, a limit regulatory sign used to reduce the posted speed a speed before the school zone gradually from 45 to 35 to 25 miles per hour uh, at the school zone. The reduce speed ahead warning sign or RSA includes this sign before the school zone and a speed monitoring display or SMD that alerts drivers if they are speeding before the school zone uh, when they arrive at the school zone as well. Um, all the strategies were evaluated considering roadside signs uh, as one of the, um, of the configurations or an overhead sign that was the other configuration that was the best countermeasure developed in a previous study that we conducted at the University of Puerto Rico and Maya West. 
Our research approach, uh, approach includes the typical tasks on a simulation research study, uh, from literature review to conclusions and recommendations. I want to highlight the um, driving simulation experiment task that we were fortunate to finish previous to the lockdown of the pandemic for this project. Uh, in terms of the selection of the school zone, um, this was performed in a previous study. So considering the, all the variables, uh, including traffic exposure, crash rates, environmental complexity, and safety perception, we selected the second unit Samuel Adams uh, located in the rural area of the municipality of Aguadilla, Puerto Rico. Um, the, this, uh, school zone in, this school includes uh, grades from pre-K to nine and has approximately 900 students. The school has direct access from the Pier 2 arterial road, as you can see in one of the pictures here. And uh, the highway is part of the national highway system, PR2, and it has two lanes in each direction with a speed limit of 45 miles per hour. The road study section has a length of 1.5 kilometers with 500 meters before and after the school zone. And the posted speed limit in the school zone is 25 miles per hour. The experimental design, as I was telling you before, included two configurations of uh, traffic control devices and four uh, posted speed limit strategies. The um, scenarios in configuration one have road sign uh, signs only. Meanwhile, the scenarios in configuration two have an overhead sign with flashing beacons alerting the drivers about the regulatory speed limit on a, of the second a school zone. Now let me show you real quick a couple of videos uh, presenting the driving simulation scenarios developed by our research team. Uh, the one at the right corresponds to the speed monitoring display and the one in the left coming the overhead sign coming up and it, is, uh, it corresponds to the two, um, two step reduction, okay? Now, um, in terms of uh, points and zones of interest, um, we defined these uh, five points of interest and three areas of interest. Uh, five points were selected to assess the spot speed and acceleration of drivers. Uh, you can see here uh, point zero, one, two, three, and four. And uh, point one corresponds to free flow speed. Uh, uh, sorry, point zero to free flow speed. Point one to the 35 miles per hour regulatory sign. Uh, that is used only in the two-step reduction strategy. And uh, uh, point one, uh, 25 miles per hour regulatory sign corresponding to the school zone. And then point three was located near the entrance of the school zone uh, where pedestrians interact with vehicles. Um, and also uh, uh, point four for the school entrance. Then uh, zone one, um, corresponds to an area between the 35 miles per hour and 25 miles per hour speed limit. And then uh, zone two is the beginning of the school zone. It's immediately after the 25 miles per hour regulatory speed sign. So uh, it's, it, it's assumed that the drivers will go at 25 miles per hour. And zone three is where the drivers, uh, the driver notices a pedestrian in uh, their cone of vision. Now, um, to elaborate a little further the scenarios, uh, you can see that the, the areas of interest depicted here on this slide with the strips colored blue, green, and pink that were evaluated for all the scenarios studied. Uh, all, in all the scenarios, we had these three areas of evaluation. Now, in terms of the points of interest, um, that are represented here with a thin vertical gray line. 
uh, under coordinates at the top of the figure, uh, we use them to evaluate the, each one of the PSL strategies depending on the scenario. Um, the, the average speed of the eight evaluated scenarios is uh, represented here uh, in this figure. The driver speed fluctuations are noticeable uh, as they approach the regulatory and warning signs countermeasures throughout uh, its trajectory. And uh, at the end of the presentation, I'm, I'm going to show a comparison between these average speed uh, profiles and an ideal speed profile. Now, uh, we performed several analyses, and I want to highlight a couple of things about uh, these tables that I am presenting here in terms of the average speeds for the zones and points of interest. I want to highlight the average speed on zone two for all the scenarios. It was expected that the drivers would have decreased their speed at or below the um, posted speed limit of 25 miles per hour of the school zone. If, if four of the scenarios evaluated have an average speed lower or equal to the PSL of the school zone. We have here in this case and uh, uh, However, the average speed uh, remained higher than the posted speed limit until drivers reach zone three where they observe the presence of pedestrians. Uh, in terms of the, um, uh, some additional analysis were carried out to obtain more information about the subject's behavior. When we looked at the operational speeds in almost all, all the scenarios, the 85th percentile of the speed was above the speed limit marked until zone three, where the drivers noticed the pedestrian's presence in the corner vision. Um, the 85th percentile speed was higher than the posted speed limit in 87.5% of the scenarios. Uh, now, uh, this table presents the average speed difference in zones and points of interest for each one of the countermeasures. Um, we perform t-tests with bound for corrections to evaluate significant differences between the average speed at the points and areas of interest in the eight scenarios. A, a comparison um, indicated that 53% um, of the cells show significant differences between the speeds of the scenarios compared at the confidence level of 95%. So we have, a, in this case, we, all, all the countermeasures presented a significant differences. Now, in terms of speed compliance, this is related to each one of the subjects. It's not an average like, like it was the case in the previous tables. So the speed compliance was evaluated and the values uh, such as 67% and 75% can be observed within the data, which is uh, really good uh, compared to uh, the initial studies when, when we started studying this, uh, this type of the, the, the speeding behavior in the school zones. So scenario five presented high percentages of compliance with the speed limit in four of the evaluated points. Uh, scenario five is the base, base scenario, but with the overhead sign. That is the same strategy that we evaluated uh, in a previous study that was the best strategy for that study. Um, now, scenarios six and seven uh, with percentages of 58% and 33% compliance and a scenarios with the overhead sign five to eight in configuration two had higher PSL compliance as compared to scenarios without the overhead sign. Um, however, the two-step reduction strategy with the overhead, without the overhead sign has a 50% compliance in zone three, which is, a, a, which was, a, was good as well. Now, here I'm going to show you a couple of slides presenting a comparison of um, uh, the differences on 
average speed profiles and ideal speed profiles um, for uh, scenarios paired. And uh, at the left, we have these uh, representations for the, the signs, uh, the roadside signs, the current type of configuration. And to the right, we have the figures that represent what happened when we include the overhead sign and uh, markings. So as you can see here, in this case, uh, in the figures at the left, we see that the uh, average speed profile is almost always over the ideal uh, speed curve. The ideal speed curve is representing basically the um, speed limit, the posted speed limit, and the changes from 45 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour. Um, meanwhile, the um, um, average speed profile represents the actual uh, speeds for the drivers. And in the bottom, you see the, the differences, the difference between the two profiles. Um, so in this case, <clears throat> what we can observe is that definitely the overhead signs and markings are uh, a, a very, very good improvement in terms of uh, reducing speeding. Now, uh, this slide presents a similar figures for, but in this case, uh, scenarios two and six, which represent the two-step reduction strategy. So in this case, the ideal curve uh, goes from 45 to 35 and then to 25 miles per hour. So uh, in this case, we have a, a better performance uh, in the left than what we have at the beginning. And we also have a very good performance when we have the overhead sign as well. Uh, now, this is the, in this case, we have the, the, the differences on the average speed profile and ideal speed profile for scenarios three and seven that correspond the, um, uh, the, the warning sign um, indicating that the, there, is, there is a reduction in speed ahead. So in this case, we can see that uh, this really is a, a strategy that didn't work so well. Actually for the, in, in, in the part, in the areas that of interest for the school zone, the average speed profile is uh, higher than the, uh, the, the, the ideal speed profile all over in, in the left and in the right as well. So even with the overhead sign, it didn't work out. And uh, uh, in this slide, we have the, um, uh, the comparison, but for the uh, scenarios that have the speed monitoring display that I showed you be before uh, in one of the videos, and uh, you can see that uh, this is a, also a, a strategy that actually works very well uh, to prevent the speeding. And uh, with the overhead sign, it's uh, even better because drivers actually go below the, the average speed is below the, the, the speed limit, definitely. So in conclusion, the, in, in the scenarios with the combined overhead posted speed limit sign, flashing beacon assembly, and speed monitoring display exhibit the highest posted speed limit compliance with 75%. Uh, the base conditions with the overhead posted speed limit sign with flashing beacons had the second highest compliance uh, with 66%. Uh, the conclusion in this case is that definitely the overhead sign is a very good strategy to improve compliance. And then the speed monitoring display was the most effective post speed limit compliance strategy compared with the other countermeasures. But, but the two step uh, reduction had higher post speed compliance as compared to the uh, road, uh, reduced speed ahead and the existing TCDs. So if we, if we are going to make a conclusion here, definitely 
uh, the speed monitoring display is the best. Then we have the overhead sign and we have the two-step reduction uh, in, in that order, more or less. So now, in terms of the recommendations, we definitely, based on the simulation results, we, we would recommend to evaluate the implementation of the enhanced overhead posted speed limit with flashing beacons at school zones that have, um, a, when, when the school zones have a history of excessive speeding behavior and related crashes, uh, this uh, could be a, a very good countermeasure. Also an active speed monitoring display is a promising countermeasure that uh, should be implemented and uh, will, uh, will work very good, very well for school zones to mitigate speeding issues and increase posted speed limit compliance. Um, fi finally, I would say a reliable advanced driver assistance system in new vehicles should be promoted to improve posted speed limit compliance and also speeding awareness. Um, thank you very much for your attention. We would like to thank also uh, Safer Sim former graduate students, Enid Colon and Ricardo Garcia, that helped at the beginning of this uh, uh, experiment with the, um, with the school zone uh, selection and, and all that part, and also developing the um, overhead sign. And so their contribution is acknowledged here. Um, and uh, we also uh, want to acknowledge uh, the support of Safe for Seam and the Department of Transportation. Thank you very much for, for your attention. And if you have any questions, uh, I, I will be happy to uh, take them. Thank you very much. Back to you, Jacob. Thank you, Didier. That is interesting work. Um, like you said, we will open it up to any questions or comments. Um, so I think we're all probably familiar with Zoom now. So if there are any questions or comments, feel free to mute yourself. Um, otherwise, the chat box is open. So we'll give it a few moments. I do want to say uh, that we, this presentation will be available online on the Safe for Sim YouTube channel within the next couple of days. So we will sh share that link uh, with everyone here and with everyone that's registered. So feel free to pass that along to anyone that you, um, that any colleagues that may be interested. Um, and I do see on the screen now, if you aren't already, please follow us on our social media. We do have a Twitter and YouTube that will keep you up to date on the most recent news, events, reports that Safer Sim um, has out there. So I'm not seeing any questions at this time. Um, as always, you can reach out to me or Didier afterwards if anything comes up and we'll, we'll uh, try to um, help you as best as we can. Um, and then one last thing, we do have another webinar that's scheduled on Tuesday, March 9th. Um, so we are back to our every other Tuesday schedule um, for a few weeks at this point. Um, and this will feature, the one on March 9th, will feature another project from the University of Puerto Rico. Mayaguez, Alberto Figueroa Medina will discuss gap acceptance and walking speeds of pedestrians using virtual reality. So keep your eye out for registration info that will be sent next week. So that's everything I have. Um, with that, I think we'll end it there. Thank you, Didier, for the presentation and thank you to your team for the work on this project. Um, and we will see you all at our next webinar. Thank you very much. Oh, Didier, before before we, uh, I, we did get a question come in. Um, Go ahead. So do, do you think you, do you think the same countermeasures would be effective in other parts of the US? I'm thinking specifically about typical driving patterns for speed. Yes. Um, well, what, what happened is that we actually had a, also a previous study that, that we conducted uh, using uh, subjects uh, at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. And uh, at least what I can tell you about that study is that uh, similar results were found uh, when with the strategy of the um, uh, overhead sign. So the overhead sign with flashing beacons was actually something 
that uh, was working. Uh, I wouldn't say it, it, that the improvement would be exactly the same, but uh, and definitely uh, uh, we, we can uh, continue working on this and then maybe uh, using our partners here uh, with, with Safer Sim to continue our research in this, uh, in this area. Uh, but I would say uh, based on those results, uh, the improvements are were similar. Uh, so I would say, yes, uh, for the United States, it will work. And we have, uh, uh, we use the MUTCD here in Puerto Rico as well. So uh, everything is uh, more or less the same, ex except a couple of things. Uh, for example, in our case, we have a, a, a white line that represents the uh, starting of the school zone. So one of the, the improvements that we propose here was to put, uh, to, to include the word uh, uh, school uh, on the pavement, like uh, uh, pavement marking, uh, but this is something that is common in, in the States. So in terms of uh, um, looking at the, at the first point of, uh, of the school zone, uh, is already there. What is not there is something like that uh, um, overhead sign with flashing beacons indicating, well, this is the, uh, the regulatory speed uh, from this point on, and uh, then you need to reduce your speed and something like that. And also the two-step reduction is, all, is, is, is something that, uh, that could work very well combined with the uh, overhead sign. So I would say, uh, my answer is yes in both cases. Excellent. That is interesting. And I, that's great to hear that, you know, th there's been previous work on this, you know, through this, the, our consortium. So um, that's exciting yes. to see. And we'll see what future collaborations might be in store for, for this work. Okay. Well, I think I'm not seeing any other questions after that. So like I said, thank you all for attending. Um, and we look forward to seeing you at a future presentation. Thanks and enjoy your day. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye-bye.